forgot to show you the graphic in the back that shows you four ways to think about circles and double links in an intentional community. Mm -hmm. This is probably page 48 plus 5. 48. 48. Is it? Yeah, it's it's 20 okay. Um, so what you have is just a general circle and the names of other likely possible circles in uh, a community. And the next uh, little cartoon down um, shows some additional smaller circles or functional circles with a more focused, uh, more uh, specific uh, function than the more larger, broader uh, areas of responsibility. The next one down shows little tiny round circles in every circle, which stand for people and the arrows. And the next one down shows that with a top circle. Notice. There are two representatives from the community to the top circle. Why? The group was a... No, there's three, three spots. No, there's two representatives and one, uh, one uh, operations leader, but maybe this isn't an operations leader of the community. Maybe it's just a person who's in the circle that the board wanted to sit in on the circle and have full decision rights. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's a person from that board or that circle. Um, why this is like this is so that you can help yourselves and other people learn this in a step-by-step -step way. And the reason it isn't a sooner in here is that I didn't know how to fit a PDF in a PDF, but actually Barry does. So I'm going to find out from you how to do it. Okay. Um, what I want you to see is a page, oh, I don't know what it's called in your booklet, but I do mean roles and two kind of sociocracy meetings roles in two kinds of sociocracy meetings. Could you tell me what page it is in your book where this is? 44. 35? 35, yeah. 35. 44? 35. That's a different thing there. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's four roles. Whenever I say circle administrator, I mean the same thing As, we'll, as you'll see in as you'll see in sociocracy literature and in the book We the People that says secretary or meeting I made up the term meeting manager and you'll see that in this handout and anything I've written up till now, but I like circle administrator more. It was a term made up in our sociocracy consulting group retreat that we just had of all these trainers from US went from Canada, one from Australia, and together we said, hey, let's call it that. We didn't decide exactly, we just heard different suggestions, different trainers said what they used. But I like this one because uh, this is too uh, limited to meetings, and this person does work outside of meetings. And has to do with the well-being of the circle relative to its policy meetings. Um, so I'm going to do like this. but not in promotion. This is in promotion, but 
but not in membership. What is inside the area of responsibility? And we know what that is. So we make it clear we have it in the log book or on the log site that any of us can go look at any time. And I would say a record of the decisions we've made and the policies we have so far. These three things, if it was a company or a nonprofit and a person who has a job and they have a salary or wages for that job, why? They just have this as their job, right? That's what you'll read about if you read the book, read the people and you see the example. Uh, however, if this is an intentional community and we're all volunteers, well, for goodness sakes, this person may not have enough time to do all those things. This person can uh, help somebody else do the agenda collecting, which they do, uh, and create the agenda with the facilitator. The business is a nonprofit. This is also done with the operations leader. We have to create the agenda for the next policy meeting. But in uh, intentional communities, this is probably um, good enough. Uh, they can uh, have somebody else take the minutes. They can have a different take the minutes each time. What they just have to do is get those babies into the log book or log site and, and make sure that they come up in the uh, part called administrative matters in the next policy meeting so they can be approved. And uh, um, the third thing they do is to keep that book or site, in my opinion, there should be one for each, so that we have it in physical reality, we have it in some online form. So that any of us anytime can go look up anything. And anybody in any other circle anytime if they want to, I should think, because why not? We're being transparent. It's one of the three important things. What is the whole point of sociocracy organizations? Harmonious organization, which is held up by the three values, transparency, effectiveness, equivalence. Does equivalence mean we all decide everything about everything? No, actually it doesn't. It means we all have equivalent voice in our own circle relative to the things that we're doing in our circle, which is different. So, okay. Um, the facilitator is functioning as a facilitator in his or her role when we're having policy meetings. The circle administrator is functioning in that role before we have the policy meeting and if he or she is taking the minutes during, during and after. Okay, the facilitator is functioning before the meeting to work with the circle administrator to help create the agenda. Yes, can any of these roles be the same person doing both roles? And is there any place where that is not true? Yes and yes. Go, Daniel. Thank you. 
voting, voting probably will say, oh, you just do it, Jack, and Jack does it. But we get to decide how we decide things in operations meetings, but we probably wouldn't have an operations meeting unless we all come to the common house to clean it together, and we're the circle that cleans the common house. Do you see my point? Because on membership with you, I'm membership. Alice, I'm a membership. Priska and myself, I'm membership. We each have different tasks, and we do it at home our house, at our desk, at our computer, at different times that we figure out when. And then when we come to our policy meeting, that work that we did, we didn't all do it at the same time. We might have an operations coordinating part of our meeting at the end of the meeting after the policy meeting. Again, there's four parts to a policy meeting. This is on a previous page here. Where is it? First person who finds it gets the prize. you're already doing, meeting opening, meeting closing, okay? All right. Um, now, let's talk about what we mean by operations. I think I'm going to do it right here. Operations means work. And uh, the only reason I don't keep calling it work instead of operations is because uh, I like that what we call things really does have a correspondence to what you'll read in online about sociocracy and in other articles and books and so on. Okay, it's work. Some kind of work is physical. So here is a guy or a gal with a shovel, and uh, here they are pushing the, they're not doing shovel work very well, but you get the point. Here's somebody else with a rake. So people can do physical work, that's operations. Well, here's a computer, and here's somebody uh, sitting on a chair uh, working on the computer, I have a strange haircut, and uh, they're doing work. It's all work, it's all operations. Coordinating that is the job of the operations leader. When the operations leader is in a policy meeting, they're not coordinating that. They're just sitting in the chair being one member like any other. Except they're carrying information, news reports, requests, and the bigger picture from the general circle to our functional circle. And when that operations leader is in the general circle, that person is taking notes or remembering or doing something to make sure they're grabbing the rationale for things, the plans, the future, the longer term planning, in order to share it with our promotion circle. So they're using their mind to remember what their role is, but they're not doing anything special because they have more clout than anyone else. Really. Nobody has no more clout than anyone else. The representative. When we're doing work in a business, a nonprofit, or a community, the representative is just handling the shovel or typing. You see what I mean? They have no particular role there. It's like on a computer screen when there's something and it's gray and you can't click. But put them in a policy meeting and they're just a member, they have no more clout or no less, they're sitting there in the chair doing the decision making work, hearing the reports, giving reports, helping evaluate and implement a proposal, doing all equipment, feedback, or selecting people for roles. And they are remembering what it is that's very important to our group that I'm going to make sure they know in the general circle the next time we have a meeting. When they're in the general circle, in a different chair with a different group of people, they are absolutely aware that they're representing what our functional circle needs, wants, cares about, plans to do, hopes to do, wants to do. You see? So when you look at this chart on that page, which I think was 35, yes, what it's got is policy meetings and operations work meetings. It has all four roles, and it shows what they do in each. And in some of the operations meetings, they're not doing anything in particular. If our operations meeting needs a facilitator, the facilitator would probably be in that role. But usually, we don't. The decision-making method for an operations meeting is up to the group. It's not by default consent. 